What are mitochondria? Mitochondria are little organelles. They arose, they only are found in eukaryotes. Eu means good, karyo means nucleus, so truly, like a true nucleus. So eukaryotes have a nucleus. Prokaryotes are before the nucleus. They don't have a nucleus. So eukaryotes have a nucleus. Hmm, compartmentalization. Eukaryotes have also organelles. Some eukaryotes have chloroplasts. These are the plants. They photosynthesize. Some other eukaryotes, like us, have another type of organelle called mitochondria. These arose from an ancient species that we engulfed. This is an endosymbiosis event. Symbiosis, bio means life, sim means together. So symbiotes are things that live together. Endosymbiosis, endo means inside. So endosymbiosis means you live together, holding the other one inside you. So the pre-eukaryotes engulfed an organism that was very good at energy production. And that organism eventually shed most of its genome to now have only 13 genes in the mitochondrial genome. And those 13 genes are all involved in energy production, the electron transport chain. So basically, electrons are these massive, super energy rich molecules. We basically have these organelles that produce energy. And when your muscle exercises, you basically multiply your mitochondria. You basically sort of, you know, use more and more mitochondria. And that's how you get beefed up. So basically the the muscle sort of learns how to generate more energy. So basically every single time your muscles will, you know, overnight regenerate and sort of become stronger and amplify their mitochondria and so on and so forth. So what do the mitochondria do? The mitochondria use energy to sort of do any kind of task. When you're thinking, you're using energy. This energy comes from mitochondria. Your neurons have mitochondria all over the place. Basically, this mitochondria can multiply as organelles and they can be spread along the body of your muscle. Some of your muscle cells have actually multiple nuclei, they're polynucleated, but they also have multiple mitochondria to basically uh, deal with the fact that your muscle is enormous. You can sort of span this super, super long length and you need energy throughout the length of your muscle. So that's why you have mitochondria throughout the length. And you also need transcription through the length. So you have multiple nuclei as well. So these two processes, lipids store energy. What do mitochondria do? So there's a process known as thermogenesis. Thermo heat, genesis generation. Thermogenesis is generation of heat. Remember that bathtub with the in and out? That's the equation that everybody's focused on. So how much energy do you consume? how much energy you burn. But in every thermodynamic system, there's three parts to the equation. There's energy in, energy out, and energy lost. Any machine has loss of energy. How do you lose energy? You emanate heat. So heat is energy loss. So um, there's... Which is where the thermogenesis comes in. Thermogenesis is actually a regulatory process that modulates the third component of the thermodynamic equation. You can basically control thermogenesis explicitly. You can turn on and turn off thermogenesis. And that's where the mitochondria comes into play. Exactly. So IRX3 and RX5 turn out to be the master regulators of a process of thermogenesis versus lipogenesis, generation of fat. So IRX3 and RX5 in most people burn heat, burn, burn calories as heat. So when you eat too much, just burn it, burn it off in your, in your fat cells. So that bathtub has basically a, a sort of dissipation knob that most people are able to turn on. I am unable to turn that on because I am a homozygous carrier for the mutation that changes a T into a C in the RS1421085 allele, a locus, a SNP. I have the risk allele twice from my mom and from my dad. So I'm unable to thermogenize. I'm unable to turn on thermogenesis through IRX3 and RX5 because the regulator that normally binds here, RX5B can no longer bind because it's an AT rich interacting domain. And as soon as I change the T into a C, it can no longer bind because it's no longer AT rich. 
But doesn't that mean that you're able to use the energy more efficiently? You're, you're not generating heat. Or is that- That means I can eat less and get around just fine. Yes. Yeah. So that's, so a, it, that's it, a feature actually. It's a feature in a, in a food scarce environment. Yeah. But if uh, we're all starving, I'm doing great. If we all have access to massive amounts of food, I'm, I'm obese basically.